Hey gamers. Today we will be talking about the ways to improve our survival rates against an encounter with Bubber and his murderous family members from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Let's take a look at the stats and feats of Leatherface aka Bubber Sawyer first before we talk about our options later. Bubber is a 6 foot 7 inch, 330 lbs, 24 years young male at first appearance, he is a human serial killer forward slash cannibal. Compared to most average Joes, he is a tall powerhouse with immense strength that could rival a wild chimpanzee and athletic enough to compete in the Olympics. He is basically Cool Aid Man and Mini Hulk combined. His feats include breaking through walls, doors, crushing skulls with his hammer, decapitating a head with one strike, overpower a policeman, causing a van so much damage that it crashed in seconds, easily lift a woman and toss her away with one arm. His speed is nothing to be scoffed at, as he is just as fast as his victims during a chase while holding his heavy chainsaw and can quickly run towards his unaware victims and dispatch them before they could react. His durability allows him to tank multiple attacks and being dragged by a chain around his neck. He can shrug off being stabbed through the chest with a chainsaw or sharp weapon and being shot directly with a shotgun. He usually attacks with his weapons in close range but can also throw them at victims to cause an injury or fatality. His impaired learning disability causes him to act like a child and thus his violent crimes are sometimes controlled by his family and his fear of the outside world. He is known to hide from his victims and do a sneak attack to dispatch them quickly. His weapons consist of his chainsaw, hammer and his limbs. Unlike Art the Clown from Terrifier, he does not fool around with his prey, give them chances to escape or plan their revenge then slowly tortures then dispatches them in grotesque and sick fashion. No no. He skips the foreplay and goes straight for the dispatches without hesitation or delay. One commenter from the video, How to Beat the Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 2022, said that a trained fighter could take out Bubber. It would be unwise to face Bubber head on because that is a surefire way to give Bubber an easy time to tear the fighter's face off and snap his limbs and neck into broken pieces. Most victims would not be able to match Bubber's physical capabilities and therefore will be in severe disadvantage to deal with Bubber in his favorite close-range combat. Even being within 7 feet of Bubber would prove deadly as he is known to throw weapons or heavy objects at his victims to deal damage or incapacitate them. Due to his lack of ranged weapons equipped, attacking him from behind or from far away to outside of his throwing radius would be advantageous such as using long-range weapons like bow and arrow, crossbow and bolts, grenades, firearms such as the shotgun, R-15, SMG, even handguns. Priority targets would be his legs, kneecaps and shins to slow his movement speed down and making it difficult for him to block long-range attack with his chainsaw. Due to him being a human and not a supernatural entity, he would be slowed down and the pain forward slash walking disability could affect his offensive capability negatively, thus making him a slow and ineffective threat and buy us more time to think of ways to defeat him or save lives. There are some helpful tips and realistic advice that we could use to survive an encounter with Bubber and the other killers in Dead by Daylight and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. To make it fair and realistic, both killers and players will only have access to melee weapons and tools and both sides can't just whip out a handgun or flamethrower to fight just like in the games and movie. Now let's talk about our arsenal to fight back forward slash resist the killers, we could grab pocket sand on surface to be kept in both pockets to use as a close range distraction and counter attack. This will do little to no damage but will disorientate and blind killers when used. It's basically sand attack from the Pokemon series. Toolboxes found in the games can be kept and used as a heavy throwing weapon aimed at the feet or knees of the killers to injure and potentially slow them down or be placed at a corner on the floor as a low ground obstacle to trip the killers when they turn the corner to chase after you. Hammer, screwdriver, handsaw to be found in toolbox when searching and kept as mediocre weapons and tools to gain access through blockages forward slash locked doors forward slash hatches. They can be used as a weak to decent parry weapon when attacked to block and minimize majority of the frontal attacks. They can also be used as a counter weapon to dodge out of killer's weapons or chainsaw sweep while attacking on their elbow forward slash arm forward slash kneecap forward slash ankles. Can sometimes break the chain on the chainsaw and cause malfunction due to upgrades forward slash chance. Can also be used as a distraction or ranged weapon to be thrown at killers or near them. Nets can be found near fishing gear which can be thrown at chainsaw which is running to jam and temporarily disable the chainsaw sweeping attacks. When backed into a corner, you can surprise the killer while being chased by suddenly turning around to deliver a sudden back kick to the center mass of the killer, thus stunning or knocking him out if he runs into the kick and giving you some time to avoid being cornered and running to another favorable or undiscovered location. 
Survivors can also kick killers in the balls or shove or teep kick them for a chance to knock them out or down. For stealth, you can lie down on the ground or be in the cradle position for maximum stealth to hide inside bushes. You can juke the killer's attack path, can cover yourself with a giant cloth to camouflage yourself and hide from killers. Your chance of survival is low assuming you are starting off your escape from his basement and territory and that he knows the map like the back of his hand. That is why it's so important for you to start off with the strongest loadout that include basic self-defense weapons and essential survivor items. This is helpful for when you are kidnapped and tied up in Bubba's basement, that is when your essential survival items can shine. Having a pocket knife or Swiss army knife that is tucked inside your pocket or secret pouch beneath your clothes would prove helpful when you are kidnapped and tied with cable ties or ropes in the basement. A mini but powerful torchlight would serve you well to provide a blind to killers and help yourself or others get more distance and hide easier. A lighter is useful to light Molotov cocktails that you find or make, or use to set fires and cause distractions that could cause killers to abandon the chase and return to put out the fires. It is useful to create a makeshift flamethrower with flammable pressurized can like a hairspray or insecticide to burn the killers in a confrontation of sneak flank attack. It is also a mini light source that is stealthy for using in the dark to not alert the killers, and it is a backup light source when your torchlight runs out of juice. Bringing a small to medium pouch to store some marbles and a banana could also prove useful to toss on the floor behind you during a chase to cause the killers to step on them and fall onto the floor, potentially injuring themselves and losing line of sight when you gain more distance between yourselves. Now for the encounter loadout where you meet the killers in a public place or town. For self-defense, you want to carry a pepper spray and or tarzer, this is useful to attack the killers when they drop their guard or aren't aware of your presence or are unarmed. Ideally your secondary weapon of choice should be a hunting or combat knife, which is also your last resort weapon when all else fails and fighting is inevitable. Bring a strong duct tape so that you can tape your knife onto a broomstick or long stick which you have found or broken to turn it into a makeshift spear that can give you even more edge during combat. Ideally, the strategy is to utilize stealth and cardio to trick, hide and run away from the killers. Working together in a team with other survivors is a key, you would need at least player A to be on the lookout and player B to work on task. Player C and D to arm themselves and get ready to ambush the killers while hiding behind obstacles. In a 4v1 scenario like in Dead by Daylight, it is easier to outwit and overpower Bubber in sheer numbers as long players are cooperative and know their roles well. In the TCM game, it is easy for players to slip through big cracks and vault over tables to avoid Bubber and give him a run for his money. But not so when faced against other killers as they are quick on their feet and similar size to do the same feats and armed with knives that could deliver a critical blow to the back and neck easily when your back is turned towards them. Instead of running away from normal sized killers, fighting them one by one head on with a longer reach weapon, such as a baseball bat or bow staff or makeshift spear is ideal. Make sure to disarm them and disable their legs to lower their threat levels. However, you should avoid a frontal confrontation against Bubber at all cores but only as a last resort when you are trapped into a corner. Plenty of space or rooms for you to juke and run around and lose line of sight and plenty pallets or obstacles you can drop on him or put between you and Bubber so that you can try to ambush him to lower his mobility and wear down his weapons and durability. Bob and weave to avoid his melee attacks and throwing weapon attack that he does once in a while and always get out of his attack range while using all the tactics discussed so far. Splitting up is highly discouraged as this makes it easy for killers to gang up on and tunnel a single target for fast dispatchment and you can't buy time with an extra helper who can see, hear, talk and complete tasks such as lock picking a lock or finding the right tool out of the toolboxes or be a distraction to allow you to focus on against all odds and with a great deal of luck, skill, preparedness and practice, you utilize your combat and escape capabilities to the max and manage to outwit and outfinesse the killers and finally escaped out of the hellhole alive with a greater than 55% survival rate. The killers were so surprised how a survivor like yourself is able to demonstrate immense resourcefulness, fighting will and determination to fight back and win against them and the seemingly unbeatable powerhouse that is Bubber. Having defeated the killers and potentially disabling some while dispatching the rest, you walk away from the opened exit gate with some bleeding wounds but you will survive. You turned around and witnessed the sunrise beginning to emerge behind the slaughterhouse and with a gleeful smirk, you continue walking with your head forward and held high knowing the worst is already. Congratulations on beating the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. So how would you survive the encounter with Bubber and the killers? What other killers should I do a video on next? Comment below and remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video.
Am I supposed to just go through the front door to escape? I mean, I should find the lock. Maybe upstairs? No, you don't see me. You don't see me. You don't see me. <laughs> what am I doing, girl? Fucking way. What's that over there? Dude, where is the chain? <laughs> <I've got laughs> <this. laughs> uh, I'm surprised. Why did he just stab me there? I do get the whole um you know fucking around. This fucking around with your victims. This is where you're supposed to escape. Oh, shit. I don't know. I'm just gonna walk out. Talk to you. I'm getting out of here. I don't know. I, I, I seriously don't know. Getting the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Please, don't. Yes! Please help me! He did. He he really did. Alright. I guess. Huh. I guess we 